For the next demonstration, what I had to do is turn this device. So this thing in back comes loose, I can twist it and turn it and then lock it in place again. So what we have is the electric signal going this way now so that we can have it pass through a grid. And what I've got here is the two-slit experiment. Many of you may be familiar with that. And so you'll see there are two one and a half centimeter slots here. And I'll line it up when I get down here. And what we're going to do is explore diffraction. And line this up. I'm going to put the horn on here and we're going to keep it sideways again so that we can pick up the radiation that's coming through. So we'll take this and we're getting a strong signal. Another strong signal. So you notice there are several signals on either side. So we have a really strong signal down the middle and then other signals out at fixed points. Basically what's happening is these waves are coming out and interfering. And by the time they get here, where they cross and add, there are strong nodal points. In between, where they subtract, there are nulls. So we have a really strong signal. Another strong signal. And another one out here. So you're noticing there's three here and two over here. So that's a double slit experiment. I'd like to show you one last diffraction experiment and I'll need one moment to set that up. So this is what's called a knife edge experiment. So we have half of it blocked, half open. And what's going to happen, this is like real life. Now when I'm in this room and I'm talking, people can hear me in the other room. Why is that? Because the sound diffracts around corners. And the same thing happens with light or electromagnetic radiation of all kinds. So if you're living in a city, you can actually detect signals from radio transmitters because it re diffracts around buildings. And that's what we're going to show here. So I'm going to come down here. We have our horn once again. We get a very strong signal. We come behind the screen and it goes dead. But listen to that. It's coming back. And we're getting some fairly strong signal over here. And we're getting a little bit over here as well. Okay? So we get diffraction around an edge. And that allows radio signals in the city to bend around buildings, bend around mountains, bend around obstacles, so you can detect radio signals and hear your favorite station. Okay, what we have here is a Fresnel lens. And what I've done is I've taken some uh, aluminum coated uh, insulation and cut circles out at specific uh, widths. And you can see more information about that. So you get a center and then different ones and they can be pulled out. And what we're going to do is show that when we pull out the center and every other one from there, it will act like a lens called a Fresnel lens. And if you want more information, there'll be some in that article I was talking about, giving the mathematics. But basically what you have is where the, the transmitted signal comes through and adds up all the time. So it's constructive interference, and so you get an a increase in signal. Okay, so this Fresnel lens works in that way. The opposite ones, if I pull those, they should decrease the signal. And we're going to check and see if that works. Okay, so we've removed the center circle and every other one, 
and now it should act like a lens. We have our receiving horn over here and our transmitting horn there. It's, the transmitter is already on. Let's turn on the receiver. Strong signal. Very strong signal. As you can see, I've set up the opposite rings. And as long as I keep them lined up, we should be getting a null response, which, because of my construction techniques and things like that, won't be zero, but it will be much lower than we heard before. So the transmitter is already on. Let's turn on the receiver. So that's about as low as it gets right there. And you hear not much signal coming through. So as the waves come through, they're actually destructively interfering. This concludes my microwave antenna demonstrations. I hope you found them instructive and entertaining. If you have any questions or require additional information, please check out the Society of Amateur Radio Astronomers website. On that website, you'll find additional information also about radio astronomy programs you can try. I hope you'll visit.